The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Small Cap Roundup, with your host, Kate Stalter. Stalter. Well, good morning out there in Radio Land. Just exchanging some messages here with producer Al about some of the music that you hear there. Al picks up some great music there that uh, he plays in between the shows. So it's always always fun to listen to his choices. Everything from 70s, 80s, right up to the present day, very eclectic. So that's always a lot of fun to hear. So let's see here. I'm going to just make a few fixes there up on the screen you see on Tiger TV. And as usual, what I like to do, because this is the small cap show, I like to put up a chart of the IWM and you've got that there on a daily, so you are seeing that 50-day moving average being the blue line. And, of course, a pullback in tandem with the general market today, holding up very nicely above that uh, medium-term 50-day moving average. So nothing too particularly panic about there in regard to that. And, of course, we are seeing some pullbacks. I was just checking some of the intraday volume before I got on the air here so we are seeing some of the indices let me see I'm just checking here that we've got some heavier volume on the NASDAQ and the NYSE indices but we do have some positive trade right now we just checked we have the Dow in positive territory and we do have of course the S&P and the NASDAQ still trading lower heavier volume all across the board so that's what we've got on not going on this morning I'm just taking a look obviously we have the big news in the plunge in crude oil yesterday Everybody's watching gold and silver this morning. Quite a lot going on. One thing that caught my attention was we did have the Home Builder Confidence Report, and that was up again in the data this morning, although did see some comments, quote, unquote. Uh, this is from, from one of the officials in the industry. Several obstacles still slowing progress, and he cited credit conditions in particular. I would imagine that confidence about employment and the overall economy are inhibiting home buying as well. And as we talk about, just about every week this comes up because, as you know, if you listen to the show, I do tend to track the top performing industries. I don't look for sort of the bottom fishing opportunities. I'm looking more for what's going on in terms of the strength and the home builders you know like it or not you really it's this is a tough one to keep your opinion out of because as even the the official from the, from the home builders trade group there cited there are several obstacles still slowing progress nonetheless we are seeing some renewed interest in purchasing and as i've mentioned here before you know there are several developments around me where I live here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, that then there's Centex actually. There's a couple of newer Centex developments that pretty much had just gone completely dead. I mean there are people living in these neighborhoods, but the pace of the building on some of these homes had just completely come to a standstill and in the past few months it's back. I'm seeing building crews up here working on these homes. There's another area where they are preparing to break ground on a huge complex very near me. So I'm not really looking forward to the increase in traffic that this is going to bring. 
assuming that they do fill this neighborhood. But there's a huge neighborhood by me where they're going to be building uh, a lot of new homes, new retail. So on the one hand, it's interesting. I want to see how this plays out. I, I, I hope for the best here. But on the other hand, yeah, there's going to be a lot more traffic in my neighborhood, which, uh, you know, that's that's part of the, the price of progress, is it not, I suppose? So anyway, we're seeing that this morning. And uh, let me let me do this. Let me just put up some of the charts that I kind of like to show. A lot of you have seen these before. This is Ellie May. This is a company that makes software for mortgage lenders. Bit of a consolidation right now, but holding up very, very nicely. You can see here on a weekly chart, if you're looking at Tiger TV, I mean, come on, this is just phenomenal. This is really just a tremendous indication of growth in this particular stock, showing you a lot of confidence on the part of the institutions when it comes to these. Let me see here. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some of the fundamentals. You've had earnings growth in 2011 to 24 cents a share. And we have, we're expecting to see earnings growth of 213% to 75 cents a share in 2013. So let's see here. Very, very good estimates we've got. The stock rallied to a new high this week. Let's see here. I'm just going to tell you the exact prices. Rallied to a high of $30.40, pulling back right now, getting support just a little bit. Well, it's below its five-day line, so you can't say it's support there. You you could stretch it a bit and say support near the five-day, but it's above the 15-day moving average, well above. Let me see here. It's about 15% above that 50-day line. So very orderly pullback here. I, I'm really, I'm not concerned. Again, the same as I just pointed out with the IWM, not concerned with what I'm seeing here in terms of this pullback. Let me show you another one that I've tended to talk about quite a bit. Let's see here. This is NSM, Nation Star Mortgage. Now, you see that that had a little consolidation as well. And I'm just going to kind of analyze where it's at right now. Now, you can see, let me get this on a weekly chart, a daily chart, rather. And you can kind of take a little better look and see where it is relative to prior highs. Kind of a little hard to tell on a weekly. Uh, but you see it's kind of hovering below the prior high over here from a couple weeks ago, consolidating very nicely. Now, this is another one of these uh, mortgage-related names. This one's called a non-bank residential mortgage lender. So in other words, not a bank. And this company has just been growing in leaps and bounds. If I put this back on a weekly chart for you, you can get a terrific sense of the upward tra trajectory. I always try to say that word, and I have a hard time saying it. The upward slope of this particular chart, you see that right here. This stock went public at $14 a share back in March of this year. So it's really only a few months old trading right now at about 28.73 so it has officially more than doubled since its IPO so again I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing here vis-a-vis -vis these moving averages it is trading about 8% above that 5 day line about 2.6% above that 15 day moving average so Quite a bit of good technical strength in this one. Let me just see here what we've got. We do have a couple of quarters of accelerating revenue growth. We've got some terrific growth when it comes to the earnings per share of this one. Expected to, let me just give you these numbers here. 2011, this company turned profitable, okay, for the first time, earning 23 cents per share. This year, 
Check this out. It's expected to earn $2.41 a share. That's expected to grow again to $3.28 a share in 2013. Now, this is not all organic. Uh, there have been some acquisitions that are expected to be accretive to earnings, so keep that in mind. But that's okay. You know, nothing wrong with that. Not to say that all earnings have to necessarily be organic. Cisco is a, a great point in in mind for many, many years. That particular company, when it was a, a big growth leader, that one did tend to grow very strong through acquisition. So that's certainly a strategy that many top companies employ. Nothing at all wrong with that. Let me go to a couple of the builders themselves. I've got a few minutes left here in this particular segment. Oh, let me also throw in, stick around. We have a terrific guest coming up at the half hour, bottom of the hour today, L.A. Little, who is a terrific technical analyst. He runs Technical Analysis Today, TATODAY.com. Had a chance to meet L.A. up in San Francisco back in August when I was up there for the Money Show event. Had a terrific chat up there. Did a video that will be up on the MoneyShow.com site. Great interview. He's got a new book coming out, and he's got some charts to go over, so you want to stick around and hear from him. Also, 877-927-6648. If you want to give a call in the next segment after the next commercial break, I can take a call. We can look at some charts. So I put up MHO up there. Now, this is a home builder, MH Homes. Let's see here. Let me just pull up my other data here on MSN Network. MI Homes is actually the name. I don't know how I, I, I mess that up sometimes when the ticker symbol is a little bit different than the actual name of the company. Now, this is a turnaround play, okay? Just swung back to profitability in the most recent quarter. We've had some terrific year-over-year -year acceleration in revenue growth. Very small company, market cap of $425 million. Decent liquidity for that size company, 247,000 shares a day traded on average. Now, what happened here, this, this rallied to a new high. The company recently issued some convertible notes, so those could eventually be converted into equity, of course. Uh, so you did see a bit of a pullback here, but nonetheless, uh, a lot of confidence among the institutions on the part of this particular small company. They make single-family homes for a number of, of different markets. All right, there's our segment ending. We'll come back after this one, take a look at a few more charts, give a call, and we also will be joined at the bottom of the hour by L.A. Little. So stick around. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. I'm Kate Stalter. This is the Small Cap Roundup, and we'll be right back after these messages. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, all right. Welcome back. I'm Kate Stalter. This is the Small Cap Roundup. And just to remind you, stick around. We've got terrific technical analyst. L.A. Little, who is coming up to join us after the break here. Just wanted to let you know we've got a few things going on here in TFNN land. We have a terrific workshop coming up with Tom O'Brien and Daryl Martin. You don't want to miss this. It's Dynamic Trading Strategies. It's sponsored by Nadex, and this will be in Tampa, Florida. So if you're down in that beautiful part of the world, boy, I just I just love it down there. I, I, was, I haven't been down there since earlier this year when I, I got a chance to drop by the TFNN offices, and I was just so taken by the bay there and the causeways. I spend a lot of time in Florida, actually, but uh, more on the East Coast. Yeah, got them, got my geography right there. <laughs> Not so much the West Coast. It's always funny to me in Florida, they say West Coast and East Coast, and they have to think about it there for a second. Wait, you're not talking about California when you say West Coast. So this event will be in Tampa on Saturday, September 29th from 8.30 a.m. till 12 noon. It's free, but you have to register to reserve your seat, and you're going to want to do that. 
Okay, so you can get information there. It's on the homepage of TFNN.com. A lot of good things will be happening there. In addition to hearing Tom and Daryl and Dan Cook from Nadex, you'll also get a chance to register for some prizes. You don't want to miss out on all the information is there on TFNN.com. So make sure you go check that out. Okay. Let me just take a, a look here at a couple other of the smaller cap names. I kind of started out before the break. I was talking a little bit about the housing, and I know I talk about this a lot, but it's relevant today because there was the home builder sentiment news. Okay, so I put up a chart there for Standard Pacific. I've talked about this one in the past, and let me put this up here for you. On a daily, so you can see, you know, this is interesting because <laughs> I'm just going to quickly put up a chart of the IWM. So take a look at the IWM, rallied to a new high, pulled back. Take a look at SPF, rallied to a new high, pulled back. So that's what we've got there. So, you know, not unusual to see that. It's kind of funny that these charts are kind of mirror images of each other in that sense but it's not uncommon to see these names performing in tandem with the major indices now standard pacific is an irvine california based company that makes single family attached detached homes they they are active in eight states market cap 1.4 billion a fantastic liquidity on this thing moves about 4 million shares a day on average. Now, right now, this one is trading in the single digits. That was not always the case. So, you know, this is one of these stocks that Tom and I talk about uh, quite a bit when I do the guest appearances on his show. These stocks that used to have much larger market caps and then have become smaller cap single digit names. Now, this one, back at its peak, and you can guess when this was, July of 05, <laughs> okay, uh, we, we all remember that well. So back at the peak, this one was uh, that month. It had a monthly volume of close to 25 million, okay? Um, we're still seeing huge volume on this one on a monthly basis. So this one's still uh, something that a lot of the institutions are holding. It does trade some shares. Uh, let's see here. You have a growing number of mutual funds, U.S.-based mutual funds and hedge funds do own this particular name. So, you know, it, it's kind of one of these one of these cases where even though you have the stock has plummeted, you you clearly see that a number of the institutions have held on to their shares even though a number bailed so uh, and, and we are seeing some growth in the number of institutions that are holding shares driving this particular rally that we've seen in the stock let me put this up here for you on a weekly chart and you can see the rally right here that's occurred since that bottom last summer when basically everything tanked I mean how many how many stocks uh, have we have we looked at over here that had that big collapse in the summer of 11 and then ever since then what has happened here in this particular name let me just check the earnings growth here we've had uh, some triple digit earnings growth in two of the past four quarters and double digit revenue growth in each of the past four quarters and some good analyst expectations on this one so on the fundamental case I can see very clearly why uh, this one is on the rise technically and why the analysts are pushing why the investors rather are pushing the stock higher stick around we've got la little coming up right after this break if you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter then now is the perfect time to try out ken shreve's ultimate growth stocks every tuesday ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter ultimate growth stocks with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio charts sector analysis upcoming economic data along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates right now you can receive a full month that's 30 days to evaluate ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan 
at less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right. All right. As I mentioned a couple times earlier, very excited about this segment today. Many of you know that... Uh, one of the things that I have been doing is working with Money Show and doing a number of video interviews at the live events. And at the last event last month up in San Francisco, I had the pleasure of meeting a terrific technical analyst. I think you've heard him before on Ken Shreve's show. This is L.A. Little, who's joining us today from the mountains. We're both out here in the mountain time zone. L.A., how are you today? Uh, good morning, Kate. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah, same here, same here. And I know you're uh, you're a modest type and you don't want to talk too much about your book, but I want to give you a chance to promote your upcoming book before this segment ends today. Uh, but why don't we start out? Tell us what you're seeing in the market. I'm noticing even just uh, today a little bit of back and forth going on in the major indices. We just had the European close a few moments ago. Not sure you had a chance yet to check what's going on with that. But give us your, your big picture view of what you're seeing happening in the, in the major indices right now. Sure, sure. Um, you know, it always depends on your time frame. 
And so if you're, if you're talking about, say, a short-term time frame, it really looks a little bit different than maybe the intermediate or the long term. Uh, mm -hmm. Short term, you know, if we use maybe, uh, we could use the IWM since the small cap show here. Uh, if you look at it, it just finished up an ABCD up uh, on the daily time frame. Uh, and also on that particular index has done it on the weekly as well. Uh, so, you know, from a very short term perspective, the market should try to uh, trade sideways uh, with respect to that. Now, if you look at the other indexes, they, they've done their dailies. And, and finished up their ABCDs as well, and that's across all of them. But mm -hmm. on the weeklies, they still have farther to go. For example, the SPX uh, targets about 1503. So I would think that you see some sort of pause here the next week, or you know, this week potentially a little bit uh, into next week, and uh, then it probably tries to run higher again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because I was kind of saying, and obviously, you know, you, you and I don't necessarily use the same technical indicators, but you're saying something similar to what I was saying uh, when I first began the show today is the fact that I'm not particularly concerned about what I'm seeing here with regard to the pullbacks in the indices and some of the individual stocks. I'm seeing good support at moving averages. So it just seems to me, I agree with you, that we're seeing kind of uh, what appears to be a setup for a short-term pullback at this juncture. Well, it, it would make sense. I mean, I mean, just if, if you just pull off the charts and look at them, and, and I know you have yours up, but if you look at, like, say, the IWM, um, the thing, let me, let me get the IWM because I have the Russell up. Let me pull it up for myself here. Um, you had a huge move. I mean, I mean, you went from, what, 76 to 87 in, in mm -hmm. roughly uh, six weeks? I mean, that's mm -hmm. a big move. But even more dynamic is in the last two weeks. Uh, you took a low of 80, almost to 87. Um, that's, that's a large move for a major index, and it takes a little while to digest that. But, you know, in terms of a pullback, I mean, it's not even hardly pulling back. I mean, two little days of light volume <laughs> pullback is nothing. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I, I, I think they're very positive. Matter of fact, uh, you know, I, I'm concerned that it doesn't pull back enough to let me back in into some of the positions I sold. Okay, right, right. You want a chance for the uh, kind of what we sometimes call the weak holders to sell their positions and set the stage for some, some of us who want to look for some dip buying opportunities to come in. Yeah, you want it to digest. I mean, I mean you don't, you know, the, the worst thing that could happen is this thing just goes straight up, right? Because mm -hmm. if you get that kind of a move, um, A, you can't. You can't buy it, and B, um, it actually sets up a worse uh, pullback when it finally comes. So you mm -hmm. you really want the market to digest here. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's uh, I, I talk a lot about buying into strength, but I don't mean chasing something that keeps running to new highs. <laughs> That's dangerous. No, it is. It is dangerous, and and it's um, you know it's it's a tough thing to do. I mean, some, especially in the small cap world, because you can get violent moves and. Um, there you have to be careful. You know, when we, when we talked, um, you know, and I, I'll go back uh, and, and, and try to plug the book a little bit here as yeah. part of, of the conversation. When we talked, uh, what was it, back in, I guess it was late August. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I, I think the first interview uh, that we, you know, we did a couple segments, and, and the first one I talked about the SPX and, and the S&P 500, and if it broke out, it probably was going to carry. You know, and the odds, you know, suggested that it would carry. And, and the reason for that is that there were swing point highs on multiple time frames. And some of the research I did for the new book, which is called Trend Trading Setups, um, really was all about, okay, what are the characteristics that are in common that can take a good trade and make it a great trade? You know, what are those common characteristics? And so what I did is I looked across, you know, I, I'm an engineer by trade, uh, in my former life, and I take that engineering principle and, and, and try to apply it to the markets and try to look at the probability of uh, various events that take place. And so my idea was, okay, what are, what's the common characteristics and what can you identify as them? And I identified 10. And one large component of that is this whole concept of multiple time frames, multiple swing points being broken. And mm -hmm. when that happens, independent of volume, it, it really – sets up a big trade. And, and that, was what was, that was what we talked about in that first segment, if you remember, and mm -hmm. that's what came to pass, and that's why we've got this big move. 
And what's interesting to me, even though we have had some heavy volume on some of these big moves, I appreciate the fact that what you are saying in your methodology, you're kind of volume independent, as you just said. If you, if you have certain, you know, I, I always look at volume because you want confirmation, right? And, and, and you want to look at volume comparative to something. So it's not just average volume. You want to look back at a prior swing point. You want to see how it attacked that swing point. If, if it has increased volume as it goes over a prior swing point, so if you look at your SPX chart and you look back at, the, you know, say the April May time frame when we went over that, we tested it once and we tested it right before we, you and I sat down and talked. Mm -hmm. um, but then when, when we finally broke over it, in this case, we actually had volume on the daily on the SPX. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking at that. Okay, you know what? I've lost my audio there with L.A., and hopefully we can get him back here in just a couple minutes. I heard some kind of strange noise there. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do here, and hopefully we can get him back on the line, but I'm going to go back and take a look at some of these charts that we do have over here. Let's see. We have one that I did want to take a look at, and this is one that's uh, that's been moving. It's actually a mid-cap. Here we go. And I think maybe we have L.A. back on the line here, and I'll show you Jazz Pharmaceuticals in the last segment of the show today. Okay, L.A., we were talking about the SPX, and let me put that chart right back up here. And I do see what you were talking about with that the breakout did hold, and we had some, some heavy volume on that run-up, which uh, was very encouraging. But come back to your point about the, the comparison points that you want to make, because that was pretty interesting. Yeah, if, if you look, uh, and, and sorry about that, I, I, I don't know what happened, but if you look at it on the daily, we did have volume. But if you mm -hmm. look at it on the weeklies, we didn't. And independent of that, it still ran higher. And, you know, I mean, you can say, oh, well, it's because we got the quantitative easing or whatever. But, you know, when it breaks, and it breaks with volume or without volume, if there's multiple swing points on multiple time frames, my analysis shows, you know, I, I looked at about 12 years of data and, and went through every stock that was in the uh, – uh, that, that was traded, you know, over 8,000 of them. And, and in doing so, that characteristic is a huge characteristic. Now, you need other things to confirm it. I mean, there's, there's like 10 points that I identified in the book, but that's one large component of it, and that's what we had, and that's what took place. And, and I don't expect us to come back there. We're, we're going to probably shoot up to about 1,500, and we may extend farther. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's a powerful move. We might get some sort of small retrace, but more than likely this thing's going to go higher. Let's talk then about some individual stocks. I know you've got some small caps that you've been tracking, that you've seen some uh, some interesting elements to the charts. Talk about some of these. Yeah, sure. You were talking about uh, the, the home builders earlier, mm -hmm. so we might just segue into that. Uh, MTH is, is another one that's, that's a small name that, um, you know, this is a good-looking chart. I mean, it's doing mm -hmm. a little bit of a pullback, but you've got – you know, if you think about charts, you've got stocks, you've got sectors, you've got the, in, the general indexes. You know, stocks move sectors, sectors move the general index, and vice versa. And when, when you've got a sector, you know, I've got this thing I call the trading cube that was, in, that was introduced in my other book, Trend Qualification and Trading. The idea there is that you really want to look at all three of those things across all the time frames, and it's a snapshot view of that. In this particular case, MTH it has strong support in the sector. Of course, the market is strong. It's probably the strongest sector right now. And if you look at it on the daily, you look at it on the weekly, it, there's nothing wrong with this stock. I mean, it, it, on the weekly, you had a huge bump up in July on volume. It sat there and digested it, and now it's pushing up again. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's, there's other names, small names, maybe uh, Tumi Holdings, T-U-M-I. Uh, Meritage oh, yeah. was M-T-H. Uh, to me, T U T is in Tom U M I. This is another one that's a strong, strong name. They're a, of all things, they they do luggage, but I think it's pulling back today some. But this thing has had a heck of a run. It's a new issue. Uh, hasn't been out there that long, six seven uh, months. Mm -hmm. uh, it came up. It's testing the original IPO area now. But if you if you just 
you know, pull over and don't look at the IPO. It had a nice bump up in, in early August, a little follow yeah. through. It's getting a pullback. That price point, you know, now when I talk about volume and comparisons, I'd love to see this thing come back in on a weekly basis into that 8.6 high, which is about 23.90. And mm -hmm. uh, if it does that and there's no volume, it's a great place to pick it back up and go again. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, I like new issues because they often do seem to be, after they kind of have a, a chance to initially consolidate like this one did, then they often do show very strong technical run-ups. They, they do, and, and this one in particular, uh, you have got it, You probably have it up on your, your charts there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at it on the daily, you had a big gap up, and, and it held that gap. That's a very strong you know, situation, and, and now it's fading back into the top of that bar on the gap up, and that's the area that's most interesting. So we'll see mm -hmm. how it trades as it comes back there, but that's another nice one. Uh, there, there's some in, you know, if you look at the sectors that are most important now, given what's happening with all of the QE and the mm -hmm. flood of money that's coming at us, you know, financials is another place that you can look. A lot of the regionals like Ozark, Bank of the Ozarks, O-Z-R-K, mm -hmm. uh, that one has a nice pattern. Uh, it, it continues. I mean, these are not screamers, but these are these are strong stocks. Uh, they're making and, and good money. LA, and this is interesting because we have uh, a lot of uh, small cap fund managers who come on the show. Totally different methodology to yours, and several of them have talked about Bank of the Ozarks. Very interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, technically, this is a nice looking chart. Now, it could take a little break up here, but you can see it's it's trading up at the highs that it did on its last earnings, I believe, and. Uh, you know, it's testing them, and you've got earnings coming around the corner again, so it looks to me like they're still accumulating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and let me ask you something. I know, you know you're, you're the technical analysis guy. It's so interesting because I'm pulling up the charts of the stocks you're talking about, and there's also fundamental potential in these as well. And I know that you're tracking the technicals, but do you see any relationship between the strong earnings growth and then what you see when it comes to the buying of the stock itself? Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I have uh, I have a bunch of tools that I use. Uh, some of them are services on my site, but uh, you know, there's, on the Trading Cube page, there's some key fundamentals that I always look at. And earnings growth um, and revenue growth, you know, that that is something that's important. I mean, you have to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's not that I trade off of that as much, but it certainly it certainly makes me more comfortable when I see that they're growing both the top and the bottom line at a at a healthy pace, uh, and the technicals are supporting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, there, I mean, there, all, the there IBD, often seems to be. That's the IBD thing that uh, you and Ken and others from mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, uh, genre or whatever, I mean, that, that's, right. that's what you guys always looked at. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, William uh, O'Neill was right. I mean, mm -hmm. there was nothing wrong with his methodology. Absolutely, yeah, it works. Hey, we've got like a minute left. Anything we can look at real quickly here? Any, any one more chart? This has gone by in a heartbeat. Yeah, too fast. How about this, <laughs> this one's a fun, this is a nice name, Booz Allen, B-A-H. I was looking at this one just recently uh -huh. and trying to decide whether I want to try to buy it or not. Oh, yeah. Uh, this has had a heck of a run. Mm -hmm. And also an, another one that uh, has strong fundamentals and, um, you know, of all things, uh, you know, these, these guys, uh, uh, they're, well, what I want to say, it, 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 it's a consulting company, it's technology, and, and so, I, I, you know, they're in the security side of things, and, mm -hmm. and they look really strong. So, Very that's interesting, another. yeah. What, what's, yeah. What's the, you, I got Booz Allen. What was the other chart? I'll put it up here real quick. Well, it was, B-A-H. B-A-H, okay, yeah, got it. Very good. Hey, L.A., there we go. See, this just... Blew by. I can't believe this. I, I want to tell everybody, go to Amazon.com. They can pre-order your book right there, which officially comes out October 9th. Trend Trading Setups, Entering and Exiting Trends for Maximum Profit. L.A., thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show today. Okay, thank you a, a bunch. I appreciate it. Enjoy mm -hmm. talking to you. All right. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently,
Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, last segment of today's Small Cap Roundup. I want to thank our guest, L.A. Little. He's terrific. I always enjoy getting his viewpoint. viewpoint. He's got a very interesting uh, way of analyzing uh, small caps, large caps, mid caps, the market. So great to have him as a guest today. Now, just want to remind everybody, you can check out the Low Price Leaders newsletter on TFNN.com. Take a two-week free trial. Get in at the low introductory rate. And there's also a lot of other content if you go to the homepage, tfnn.com. I told you about the workshop that uh, Tom O'Brien and Daryl Martin are doing coming up in Tampa. A lot of other information on the homepage, free reports, market analysis that you can find on there. Wanted to take these last few minutes of the show, look at a couple other names here that I was watching uh, just in terms of some of the big movers today. Now, this is actually a mid-cap that I just put up there 
But it's one that you may not hear about too often. It's Jazz Pharmaceuticals. Market cap of about $3.5 billion, moves about 716,000 shares a day. Excellent fundamentals on this one. Exactly the kind of double and triple digit revenue growth you want to see. Double digit year over year earnings growth in the past few quarters. Now this company, you, you do see, I've got that for you there on a weekly. Let me put this up on a daily chart for you. And this company makes some interesting meds that treat narcolepsy, uh, OCD, other anxiety disorders. So in, in some of the psychiatric drug category. And look at that. On a daily chart, so you see what's happening here in the last uh, last couple of sessions. Now what happened, there were some positive developments for the company in a patent dispute over a narcolepsy drug. And it's not always important to know what the why is. But, of course, when you see a move like that, you want to, I do anyway, I think most of us have that inclination. You want to see, well, what happened here? What happened? That, that kind of move doesn't just happen out of the blue, and it did not. Okay, so that's Jazz Pharmaceuticals. Let me just show you a couple others here. Let me see here. Parexel. That's another one that... I've known about this one for a few years. Now, this is also from the medical area. And, of course, as you know, a lot of these medical names have been among the best performers in the past year or so, medical research company. Now, this one initiated a share repurchase program. So that's what has been sending this stock higher. Also, the company participated in an investor conference recently, the Robert Baird Healthcare Conference. That also, uh, over time, that also can have a positive effect on a stock. I've been to some of those conferences. Pretty interesting. You have the institutional investors, the investment bankers, the fund managers, analysts who are there. They listen to the new initiatives that the company is touting. If they like what they hear, they do recommend purchasing on the part of the institutions that uh, that are their clients or that they work for and it is a pretty pretty interesting phenomenon so that happened as well got a few seconds here left i want to show you one more that i looked at this is the kramer bounce i know a lot of you know that i do some work for jim kramer's realmoney.com i've been over there for a couple of years now and this is a stock, AFCE Enterprise. It's Popeye's. They don't call it Popeye's Fried Chicken anymore. It's Popeye's Chicken. They've got a new initiative called Louisiana Kitchen. Like everybody else, they're trying to turn more in the healthier direction. Uh, Jim Cramer has had the CEO, Cheryl Batchelder, on the show quite often. And I heard her talking about international expansion. So some initiatives there. This is a small company, definitely in our small cap wheelhouse. AFCE. Okay, that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks to our guest, L.A. Little. Great to have him joining us. And we'll be back here on Thursday with another edition of the Small Cap Roundup.